Okay guys, this is my second video talking to you guys about uh, weight loss and ARFID and intermittent fasting um, and my experience with all of those things. Um, I wanted to talk to you about how this past week has been going. If you watched my first video, uh, you know what um, I've been going through with trying to be consistent with intermittent fasting and trying to get on track with um, reaching my goal weight by uh, my brother's wedding. That's the, I don't remember if I actually mentioned that. That's that's the, the deadline. <laughs> um, my, my brother and his fiance and I all decided to have their wedding be our deadline to try to meet our all of our uh, weight goals which is in May, so eight months away. Um, and so this week hasn't, it's, it's ha it hasn't been going great, not ideal. There have been some positives, but definitely a struggle with the fasting aspect. Um, because this weekend I had a couple family dinners and usually with fasting, I will eat all of my food for the day in the morning, like I'm, I'm done eating for the day by lunchtime or before lunchtime. Um, but we had a couple family dinners, so obviously I wasn't done eating by lunchtime. And so I had obviously a shorter fasting period on those days. And then yesterday I was gonna do a normal fast, um, but then ended up having another family dinner, which wasn't really necessary, but because it was just with my immediate family. But it was nice that uh, for once we were actually all free because my husband often works in the evenings. We were for once all free and all able to like sit down and have dinner together. So I just went ahead and did that and was like, I can just do a regular fast tomorrow. Um, and so I had three days in a row where I had very short fasts. And so I'm trying to get back on track with doing the, the long fast again. And so fasting has been not super successful this week. Um, exercise hasn't been as successful as I have wanted, but it has been going better than I was doing before I started last week. Because um, before that, I wasn't really exercising at all. And so I think I might have kind of set my expectations up a little bit high with, like too high with going from doing nothing <laughs> to what I what I set my my goals at I was thinking um, of roller skating Tuesdays and Thursdays and then using my weighted hula hoop almost all the other days in between and uh, now I'm realizing that that was a little <laughs> a little too much to just jump right into um, I've used the weighted hula hoop a couple times. I've definitely struggled with pulling that out because it's really not that fun. Um, and I can't really do anything else while I'm doing it. Like I could watch something or I could listen to a podcast or whatever or listen to music or be talking to someone, I guess. But like I can't really multitask that much and <clears throat> it's just not that fun to do. So I just haven't been able to motivate myself to do it more than a couple times over the past week and a half. So I think I've done it two or three times. I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I have it in, written down in a, a habits app that I was using. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I have at least been consistent with the roller skating, so that's good. Um, I did go last Tuesday and last Thursday, and today is Tuesday. I'm actually literally at the skating rink right now. Um, 
and just filming this before before I go skating. Um, so I have at least been consistent with that, and that is more fun than doing the the hula hooping. So I at least have been consistent with one thing this week. <laughs> um, and the Habits app that I mentioned, I think actually is called Habits. Um, I found it on, I think, a Google article that listed um, several different apps to help you track different habits and, and uh, yeah, I was, I was looking up ways to, like, help me get myself motivated and, like, stay motivated and, and track progress and stuff like that. And so I found this one, and I'm pretty sure it's just called Habits. It's like a dark blue logo. Um, and you can put whatever you want your habit to be. Like, it lets you type in, like, mine says, how many minutes did you exercise? And so you can type whatever you want the question to be, and whatever you can... You can customize it a lot, basically. Um, and so I set mine as, how many minutes did you exercise? And then the goal was 20 per day. And um, I can just click on the day and put in how many minutes. And it's not, it doesn't say like any specific type of exercise. It's just like, how many minutes did you exercise in general? And then I can put it in there. And I have it set for every day, even though I haven't been exercising every day. Um, but that helps me keep track of like, how many days I'm actually exercising and even though my goal isn't necessarily like do like specific actually working out other than like walking every single day because I don't think that's very realistic for me um I just set it so that like the reminder will pop up every day so that if I do feel inclined to exercise that day then I can um and I like having it show on the the tracker which days I did so then I can go back and look and be like oh I've exercised 15 times in the last three weeks or whatever versus just not really knowing how often I did um, and just trying to remember off the top of my head and not having a way to quantify it um, it definitely helps for me to see like how many times I did it and how long I did it each time and I guess also if I wanted to I could like add up the number of minutes and be like oh I exercised this many minutes this month and so stuff like that helps me um, and so I'm glad that I've been able to be consistent with the skating at least and I did notice the first day last Tuesday that I went skating for one, it was the first time I'd been skating in a couple months, so I was definitely not used to it anymore. Seven minutes into it, my legs were already burning, and I was like, alright, I'm gonna have to build up to this, like build up to skating as long as I want to be skating each time. Um, and I pushed through as long as I could before my legs felt like they were dying. And I took a couple little breaks, but ended up doing about 20 minutes of actual skating. And then I was like, alright, I can't <laughs> handle this anymore. Um, so I did 20 minutes. And I was by myself that time because my friend wasn't able to come that day. And then Thursday, she was able to come. And I think partly because she was there, and partly because... It wasn't the first time that I had gotten back into skating. It was easier. My legs were burning a little bit towards the end, but it was a lot easier the second time. So I was actually able to skate for an hour. I was going a little slower so that we were able to talk as we were skating. And so going a little slower and it not being the first time that I had skated in a while <laughs> even though it was only the second time. Um, but then also having someone there with me instead of me just being there by myself with like almost nothing else to focus on except how my legs felt and how tired they were. 
definitely made it easier. Like, it makes a big difference for me having somebody else there with me. Um, and so that made a big difference. I went from 20 minutes to an hour. And I definitely wasn't as tired even after an hour as I was after the 20 minutes. Um, today she's not able to, well this, this week, Tuesday and Thursday, she's not able to be here because um, she's out of town, so I'm going to be skating by myself. Since it's not the first time, I might be able to go a little bit longer even by myself, um, but I don't think I'll be able to do an hour by myself because it gets kind of boring. Um, but I'll skate as long as I can, and I'll probably either call someone to talk to them while I'm skating around or listen to a podcast. Um, I can catch up on my dad's podcast, actually. He has one called Real Life and Other Fantasies. I'll link it in the description if you guys want to check it out. Um, and so doing stuff like that, I think listening to a podcast would be more engaging than just music, especially since like his podcast tend to be like 40 minutes or so, so I could try to make it through the whole podcast versus music where music just goes on indefinitely to listen to however many songs. Um, and so I think that'll help on days that my friend isn't able to meet up with me. And yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to do at least half an hour by myself. Um, cause I know she won't be able to come every day cause sometimes she works or like this week she's out of town, but it definitely does make a big difference having somebody else there. So having an accountability partner or just having someone to talk to, so it's more interesting. So this is future me just wanting to interject about the, the skating thing. Um, I actually only ended up skating for about 15 minutes today. <laughs> My knee ended up hurting, and so I skated as long as I could, but it was just hurting too much to skate very long today. That would sound like a lot. Um, but I did end up listening to my dad's podcast while I was skating, and it helped some, but I do think that talking to somebody on the phone would help me, um, because then it's harder for me to... Like, the podcast was interesting, but it's, I still kind of start to zone out a little bit and, and just keep thinking about, like, how I'm just skating in circles by myself. And so I think if I'm on the phone with somebody, that'll be the way to help myself skate longer um, when I'm there by myself. And so I think if I... Um, don't have anybody to skate with on Thursday and that's what I'm going to try for next time um, but I was only able to skate for about 15 minutes today but I did um, bring my watch today I don't wear it super often but when I was skating last Thursday uh, my friend was wearing her watch and it tracked the amount of time that we were skating but hers didn't track the distance and I had been wondering about that, so I wanted to try my watch and see if it would track the distance. So I wore it today, <clears throat> and it did track distance. And even though I only did 15 minutes, it was almost exactly a mile. And since we skated um, an hour the other day, and I think today I was skating about the same pace, I would guess that on Thursday we skated about four miles, so that's pretty exciting that we, that we did about four miles. There's no way I would have been walking four miles. So that's one thing I like about skating is that we can do a greater distance than if we were just walking, and it also is more fun. So I think um, this time I, I didn't really go for trying to skate a specific amount of time, like once I saw that it was showing the distance, and once I reached like half a mile, I pushed myself to try to reach one mile, and it kind of stopped tracking at some point, so it, I had to restart it, and so I don't know if I got exactly to that mile, but it was pretty close. Um, so I just pushed myself to do the one mile instead of pushing for a certain amount of time. Um, 
And so I think I might change up which one I do depending on on the day and, and how it's going, whatever, like just based on how how we're feeling, whatever. We might try for skating half an hour, or skating an hour, or we might try to skate two miles specifically or whatever. Um, and just go with whatever seems like it'll work that day. And then another thing um, that I was going to mention is on my first video, I got a really long, very well thought out and very considerate um, comment from somebody that I loved. It was one of the things that mentioned was um, tips for helping with like getting more protein and helping with, with eating stuff. Um, was making smoothies and that is something that I have done in the past um, because for one smoothies can be delicious but also because I can put a decent number of stuff like a decent number of ingredients in there that I wouldn't normally be able to eat like I can put blueberries in there and normally I can't eat those um, spinach yogurt cherries like, all those are things that I can't handle eating, like, outside of having them in the smoothies. And so, I'm able to tolerate those a lot better. Um, and I haven't tried putting protein powder in there or anything. I know there's protein in yogurt, um, but I'm not actually sure how much. I sometimes will do Greek yogurt because I know it has a higher protein content um, but a big part of the reason I I wasn't doing smoothies for a long time was because my blender is just terrible um, I like my smoothies really really thick like as thick as ice cream pretty much and my blender cannot handle that <laughs> and so I'll try like small with like putting just a little bit. I use frozen fruit instead of like fresh fruit and ice cubes. So I'll put frozen fruit and then the yogurt and a little bit of like apple juice or whatever for liquid. And I'll put just a little bit of the frozen fruit in at a time and blend it up to try to let the blender be able to handle it. And it can only get like halfway through before it's struggling and then like I can get it decently thick but not as thick as I like it to be like I like to be like seriously possibly even thicker than ice cream um, and so that was a big deterrent for me and it was just it would take a long time and it was just such a pain and I was like you know what I'd rather just make anything else and it would take less time and effort and so I just wasn't doing smoothies um, but after her comment, when I was reading it, I was like, you know what, maybe I will get back into smoothies. So I found a little personal blender on Amazon, and it said that it is 900 watts, and in the reviews, um, somebody was saying that a lot of times that size of blender is usually 200 to 250 watts, so this one's supposed to be like really powerful, and the reviews were all really good, and so I decided to try this one. Um, and it, I just got it yesterday, and so I'm going to try that out today after I get back from skating and see how well that works, and I'm hoping that if it does work really well, um, that it'll be really easy to make the smoothies, and, and I'll be more inclined to make them more often, because then one, I'll be able to get more produce, and I'll be able to put vegetables in there because like I mentioned spinach I can do I also will sometimes put cauliflower in there because that doesn't really have a t I mean I imagine cauliflower has flavor but <laughs> when I put it in smoothies it doesn't really seem to change the taste and so I can put those two in there occasionally I've done frozen kale um, and then like several years ago a couple times I had frozen like cut up and frozen like uh, like the yellow, the little yellow squash, 
and I think zucchini. And if you put a little bit in there, that doesn't really change the taste either. So stuff like that, I can put a lot of things that I wouldn't otherwise eat. And so that helps me get a lot more produce. And then I can put the yogurt in and get probiotics and stuff like that and protein. And so if I'm able to have smoothies a lot more often, I think that'll help a lot. And it also can be fairly filling. And so it'll help me be more full without having as much processed stuff. And I think that will help me. Um, so I think if that all works out, then I think that'll help me a lot with not needing to fill up as much on processed stuff and sugary stuff and, and carbs and whatever. Um, <clears throat> I think that'll really help with the weight loss and with eating better. Um, and so I really appreciated that comment. I don't know if she's going to watch the second video, but, but I appreciate it a lot. And I like that she took the time to, to write that whole long comment. And I actually shared it with my two friends who also have ARFID, um, in case the, the tips would help them too. So thank you. For smoothies, I usually like to use orange juice concentrate and plain yogurt, or occasionally I'll use vanilla yogurt. And I put lots and lots of frozen blueberries, a couple frozen strawberries. They're usually not that sweet but I'll put a couple in there. Um, usually a few frozen cherries and some frozen spinach, or sometimes frozen cauliflower also. And whatever juice I have, I'll put a little bit just so there's some liquid. I don't do very much just because I like them really thick. And I just got this little personal size blender on Amazon recently like literally yesterday actually <laughs> um, and today was the first time I tried it out it's surprisingly powerful and it works way better than the blender that I had before um, I it wasn't quite as thick as I like them but it was pretty close I accidentally put too much liquid in there this time but it was able to chop everything up really smoothly and really well and it didn't really get stuck it would start to get stuck a little bit and then I just turn it off, pull it out, shake it up a little bit, and then put it back in and then it was fine. So I didn't even really have to stir it or anything and it just kept going. It was surprisingly powerful, so I definitely recommend it. I got it with a coupon and a gift card, so I only technically paid $8 for it, but I think it was like $40 or so total. Um, but it's a really good blender from the one time that I've used it so far. <laughs> I decided to print out this sticker chart to help keep track of my progress. And I was originally going to use it to like put a sticker for each pound that I lose. But then I decided to instead use it um, to track each successful day of fasting because I figured that's more in my control because yeah I can do things that will influence losing weight but it's not really in my control whether I do or not but the fasting is in my control and that is something that I've been struggling with so I figured that was what I could use the chart for is motivating myself to keep being consistent with that and that is something that is in my control so that is what I should be tracking. So I decided to print out the chart and having a streak tends to motivate me, like keeping up with um, doing, like not breaking my streak of doing things however many days in a row and not missing a day tends to motivate me and like being able to physically check off a box or put a sticker on a thing does seem to be more effective for me versus checking it off on my phone, I've noticed. Um, that was the case when I was trying to be more consistent with doing um, Bible devotionals. When I got a Bible that had like daily readings at the front of the Bible and it had uh, 
a little box to check for each day and I would physically check it off with my pen. That worked a lot better for me than trying to do one on my phone. Sorry, my son's making noise next to me. Um, and so having a physical way to track it seems to work better for me, so I decided to do that. Since I mentioned that I haven't been super successful with fasting this week, and I've had shorter fasts for half the week at least, um, I haven't lost any weight really. Um, I think I've been hovering around 174 or 175. Um, I had gone down a little bit at the beginning of the week, or not like the beginning of the week, but like I did the last video on Wednesday, so like around then or like a day or two after I was around 173 and then it went back up because I was having longer fasts and, and also when I do that I tend to eat more and so it went back up to like 174 or 175. Um, but I'm going to try to be more consistent this week with fasting and I'm going to try to do smoothies more and eat a little bit less processed food and see if I can maybe lose a pound or so this week. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, one thing that I was going to say with the smoothies is that um, a lot of times like when I'm trying to thicken them up I end up making like twice as much as I need to make and so we have little popsicle molds so I'll pour that in and make uh, smoothie popsicles which my kids will sometimes eat um, but I can eat those uh, sometimes if I'm craving something sweet I could eat those instead of getting candies or whatever else it doesn't quite hit the spot. Like, it doesn't completely satisfy the craving. Like, it's sweet, but obviously it's not as sweet as candy. And so, it doesn't completely get rid of the craving, but I sometimes can substitute it. Or at least, like, I don't know, feel like, oh, I'm eating something and then just not go eat something else after. <laughs> um, and so I can make the smoothies and then have it last um, for more than just that one meal. I can have the, the popsicles and those will last for a few days because usually it makes like six, five or six popsicles. Um, and so I definitely want to try more produce. I tend to have produce every day or close to every day, but this will open up more produce that I normally wouldn't eat and more variety instead of just strawberries and grapes every day, um, which is what I've been doing lately. Uh, and I'm going to try to get away from eating like fruit snacks and candies as much because I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, and it'll be, if, if the little blender works really well and it's not like struggling like the, the regular size blender was that I was using, then I maybe would have time to make a quick smoothie in the mornings before I take my daughter to school. So then I could make a smoothie and, and drink it like on the way to school. Um. Or I could just wait until I get home from dropping her off and just make it after and have it when I'm uh, making the rest of my breakfast and just have all my breakfast at once. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. But I will work on all that stuff this week and give you guys an update next Wednesday. So I hope you guys have a good week.